Well, hey guys, get excited. We are covering another highly requested topic in today's video, and that is volume fill-in, volume fill-in, volume fill-in, however you want to say it. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board certified dermatologist. I post skincare content here on YouTube. If that sounds of interest to you, consider subscribing or following me over on Instagram or TikTok as I post there a lot as well. Now, what exactly is volume fill-in? This is a trademark ingredient from the company Sederma, and it claims to fill the bust and buttocks naturally. What? People pursue this ingredient as an alternative to filler. A lot of people are motivated to use it under their eyes. You'll recall from my video on how our face changes with age that with age, we get hollows under the eyes as the fat is redistributed and we have bony resorption that also can make our eyes look smaller. So people are motivated to do all sorts of things, buy all sorts of products to put around their eyes to make them look more youthful, more open, reduce under eye puffiness, etc. That's why eye creams are so popular even though you don't need one. Anyways, I digress. This ingredient, the company claims can enhance the decollete, fill it in. What exactly is this ingredient? It, it, you know, it's the trademark volume filine, but what exactly is that? Hydrogenated polyisobutene and NMRHNA aspirin Aloides root extract. <laughs> that is a mouthful. It is a plant extract that this company claims stimulates adipocytes, which are the fat cells, to differentiate, just thus having a natural filling effect. They claim that this plant derived molecule is a non hormonal treatment to enhance fat cell differentiation and survival, but also filling of those fat cells. And they claim that that is how it can work to enhance your bust line or act as a filling ingredient. Now, everything that they claim is based on their industry study, not a peer reviewed published paper, but you can find their industry study online if you want to read it. I will link it down below. That is where the information in this video is coming from. The information in today's video as a reminder or as a point of emphasis is merely my opinion based on what is available in terms of information from this company. But this is not anything that is standard of care. It is a cosmetic ingredient. So remember that when you're watching this, this is based on my opinion. So that root extract, it's got compounds in it called saponins, specifically one such saponin sarsapogenin, quite abundant in many plants, but it's a phytosterol. They claim or allege that it has no hormonal effects, meaning it won't impact your testosterone levels, your estrogen levels, progesterone levels, or any glucocorticoid hormones. The compound is dissolved in oil. Now, I think my understanding is they identified this compound perhaps out of a screen looking for compounds that might influence fat cell gene expression differentiation. I'm not exactly sure, honestly, how they discovered this particular compound, but they have done some studies on this compound, both in vitro, which for the record, in vitro typically means looking at cells in a dish, whereas in vivo, which they also did, means in actual either animal models or in actual people. All right, so their in vitro studies, they took human pre-adipocytes. Those are cells that want to be fat cells but aren't quite fat cells yet. They incubated them in this compound and they then did something called gene expression profiling and they identified that genes that are expressed in adipocyte differentiation, meaning that pre-adipocyte becoming who it wants to be, a fat cell, those genes were turned on in the presence of this compound and the control cells that were not incubated in the presence of this compound didn't do that. Not only did this particular compound stimulate those pre-adipocytes to differentiate into a full-blown fat cell, and it also helped in stimulating uptake of fat. So these in vitro studies kind of suggest that this compound can help pre-adipocytes turn into fat cells and stay that way for a period of time at least, and also take up fat and have fat vesicles. And why the heck would we want that? For breast augmentation, which is what really this trademark ingredient originally was kind of marketed or touted as, 
that that would help just kind of naturally fill in the breast to enhance, I guess, fat cell differentiation in the breast tissue. So they then took this compound into actual clinical, an actual clinical study and actual people, women. And what they did was they used something called FOITS, which stands for Fast Optical In Vivo Topometry of Human Skin. This is basically a method used in the industry to kind of look in a 3D fashion at the optical properties of skin. It's kind of a way to measure wrinkle depth, my understanding. I'm not an expert in this technique, but that is what I can glean from reading about it. Different papers online, FOITS. They had women put volufilin compound on one breast and not on the other. Women's breast size fluctuates with the menstrual cycle. So basically each woman served as her own internal control by comparing it to the opposite breast. Now they originally enrolled 32 subjects. Only 30 actually ended up completing the study. Only 28 cases were evaluable at the end time point. I'm not sure why they excluded the others. They don't reveal why. They looked specifically at women ages 18 to 35. The women could not be pregnant or breastfeeding because obviously that would influence breast size, no underlying hormonal issues, and their body weight had to have been stable for at least three months prior to enrolling in the study. So they applied a 5% cream gel of the volufilin to one breast twice a day for 56 days total. They were evaluated at 28 days and then again at 56 days. There was a somewhat increase in size at 20 days. As time went on, however, that increase in size became more noticeable. So at the end of the study, there was a mean of 2.2% increase in breast size with volufilin. They pulled aside eight women who they considered the best responders at 28 days, there was a 6.6% increase in breast size. And at the end of the study, they got you know the best sort of results. This is eight, this little cohort of eight women. At the end of the study, they had 8.4% increase in breast size with the volume fill-in. But again, the average increase in breast size across all was only 2.2. So that's all well and good. So should you go putting this all over your face? Is it going to fill in your face? Mm, I'm skeptical, of course, that this is doing anything to stimulate adipocyte differentiation. I mean, just think about it. You're applying it to the surface of the skin. How is that compound actually going to penetrate all the way into the skin, across the dermis, the deeper layers of the skin, into the subcutis, that's where the fat is, to influence fat cell differentiation. I know it sounds attractive to want to replace lost volume in the face. I get that question all the time. How can I restore volume from fat loss in the face? That happens with age. And it's really attractive to try and do that with something as simple as a cream gel that you put on your skin. But I mean, think about it. Would you really want to do that in such a non-specific way to just suddenly be stimulating fat cell differentiation? That could have some negative consequences. I mean, how do you, how does the, if this works the way that they claim it does, if it actually gets into the skin and does this like they, like allegedly it does, I mean, how is it controlled? You know, a concern I would have if this did work the way they claim it does is that you would end up possibly at risk for developing little fatty tumors that are actually pretty common. They're called lipomas. They're not dangerous, but they bother patients. It can be cosmetically disfiguring. Patients seek having them removed. They're easy to remove actually. Well, depending on the location, they're pretty easy to remove. Some of them can be painful. Those are called angiolipomas. Um, sometimes people get a lipoma like right here on the forehead. So just putting this on and you know thinking that it's selectively going to cause increase in fat cell mass exactly where you want it and no more, no less. I find that very, very doubtful, suspicious, questionable. I really just don't think that this does what it claims it does. Now people will say, well, how do you know if you never tried it? I mean, even if I tried it and I saw some improvement, I would still have this reservation. So that really doesn't change anything. While it's great they have this study showing an increase in breast size, there's really a complete dearth of studies on this ingredient that are peer reviewed to really say how safe this is to be doing to the skin. 
Overall, in this study at least, it appears like this ingredient is well tolerated. There aren't really any, you know, I mean, they're not telling us about any adverse effects, although not everybody completed the study and they don't tell us why. So I do question, was that because of some sort of side effect that they aren't disclosing? That being said, you know, whenever there's a study, people drop out for their own personal reason. But you can imagine that if people who were in the study and not seeing any results, they may be more likely to get bored and drop out prematurely. So that's another thing to factor in, which we're not being told as to why they, they dropped out, at least that I could find in their report. But I don't think it actually penetrates in to affect change in fat cell mass, differentiation, or what have you. And even if it did, that seems questionable in terms of safety. The other issue that I have with the way that they did this study is, again, I'm not an expert on this technique, but my understanding is that FOITS, the Fast Optical In Vivo Topometry of Human Skin Study, my understanding is it's meant to assess in a 3D fashion the skin, not the subcutis. Basically, from what I glean in terms of how the study is, technique is used, it's to study wrinkle depth which honestly putting something moisturizing on the skin will smooth out the skin surface. And I'm questioning, are they really measuring an increase in breast size here? Or are they merely measuring a reduction in surface irregularity, a skin smoothing effect, merely from applying an emollient to one side versus the other. I really question why they elected this particular technique as opposed to something to image the breast tissue itself, like mammography or ultrasound. I mean, you know, something of that nature to more objectively, I guess, quantify the breast tissue, as opposed to my understanding, this technique is really just looking at the surface. And I don't know that you would actually be detecting changes in breast volume with this technique. Again, I'm not an expert, but I do question if this really was the best methodology to test for this type of outcome. And I suspect this probably does have a hydrating effect Effect for the top of the skin. And that can have a skin plumping effect similar to any topical humectant like hyaluronic acid or peptides, for example. And it's a botanic ingredient. It may have anti-inflammatory effects, antioxidant effects as well. You could speculate that maybe have a, you know, help with moisture retention as well as reducing oxidative stress that contributes to discoloration. And overall that may give a more skin brightening, illuminating effect. But a lot of that could just be achieved by using a basic moisturizer. I've noticed that this particular plant extract, not the trademark ingredient, but this particular uh, plant extract, the Anamarene asphaloides uh, extract, root extract, I've noticed it's in other products. It's in, for example, I think Revlon has some lip glosses that contain this ingredient. I've seen it in a few other, just on a quick online search, you will find that particular root extract in other products. Now they're not claiming a filling effect, a volumizing effect or anything like that. So um, I don't think that this trademark combination is the only, only, only guy on the block. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's interesting that they market it this way. But I guess what uh, one other thing that always gives me pause, now on you can go on Amazon, of course, and you can buy the raw material, which I find interesting. You can buy a vial, it looks like, of the volufilin ingredient. It's an oily, it, it's in an oil. On the Amazon site, they tell you, you know, they show this data that I've talked about here about the, the breast size increase. And they tell you to just put a few drops in your skincare product, which I always, you know, again, I'm not a cosmetic chemist, but we're talking about an oily substance here that you're gonna put into your skincare products. How do we know that it's going to, you know, distribute evenly in that product? And then when you put it on the skin that you're gonna get even uptake, is it gonna be patchy? You can imagine if you had a, Again, not a cosmetic chemist, but I would imagine that if you take an oily substance like this, if you have a more water-based lotion that you're using, is it going to mix in? I don't, I honestly don't know. I'm not gonna pretend to, to know about that kind of thing. That seems to me more of a compounding issue, but I do question like, if you mix it in with products, is it actually going to be evenly distributed on the skin and have even penetration? Or are you gonna get clumping? I really don't know much about how this particular ingredient behaves. 
in, in products. So in the study, they used five, a 5% gel cream, cream gel. But if you just go dropping this into your lotion, moisturizer, serum, what have you, what's the final percentage gonna be? I certainly do not recommend applying the raw material, which is what it's sold as, directly to your skin. That can be incredibly irritating. All right, y'all, long story short, what do I think of this ingredient? I think it sounds too good to be true. It likely is. Yes, I know I've never used it. But honestly, I would say the same exact thing, even if I used it and all of a sudden, you know, came in here with like my 16 year old eyeballs and, you know, massive filled lips or whatever, which I doubt is gonna be what happens here. Be very careful when it comes to claims like this. I, I you know, again, this is my opinion based on what the information that they have presented. This is my opinion on the likelihood that this is gonna work the way that they say it does. Um, but I do think at the most, you will see an improvement in skin hydration with this ingredient. Seems plausible. And I suspect that may underlie some of the filling effects that people are seeing. Uh, I would love to see more research with this ingredient, and then I would have more confidence that it is not only safe, but effective in terms of doing what it says it does. But if it claims to stimulate fat cell differentiation, uh, we would wanna do that in a controlled fashion, right? I mean, you could end up with lipomas, fatty tumors, things that you don't want. So that's why I question, does this really work? Why are we not seeing that type of outcome? I know Rodeal had a breast filling cream, breast plumping cream with this in it. I, I think they still have that actually. So that's one product that I'm aware of that has this. It's also in several Asian skincare products. So let me know in the comments, have you used a product that has this? Did you buy the raw stuff online and try and mix it in with your products? Did you see any magic filling effect? But that's what I can tell you about this ingredient and my doubts as to if it works the way that it's touted to work. Again, my opinion, but I hope you all enjoyed this video. On the end slate, it's gonna be my video on how your face changes with age. So definitely check that one out if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.